Enzymes make reactions go faster. So we can speed up a reaction just by increasing the velocity of the reaction. We can regulate an enzyme by increasing the velocity of the reaction. Or we can decrease the velocity of the reaction. And the michaelis menten equation shows us that the velocity of the reaction depends on substrate. So we know that if you increase the substrate concentration, you increase the velocity of the reaction. And we can see this from a linear plot of the velocity of the reaction versus substrate concentration. It also makes sense then that if you decrease the substrate concentration, you can decrease the velocity of a reaction. And you learned about inhibitors. So you know that inhibitors bind to an enzyme and they slow down the reaction. So inhibitors can regulate enzymes by slowing down the velocity of the reaction. And you can also increase the velocity of a reaction by, adding, by having activators bind to the enzyme. And we're going to talk more about activators in the video on allosteric. In this video, we're going to talk about the effect of substrate and inhibitors on enzyme velocity. And one of the most important reactions in biology is glycolysis. Virtually all organisms carry out glycolysis. And it's important because there's a set of 10 reactions that at the end of that, those set of 10 reactions produce energy. And that energy can be used by the cell to either do work or build proteins or molecules that, that, that it needs for function or structure. And the first step in glycolysis is regulated, and it involves glucose, gets phosphorylated, a phosphate group from ATP is incorporated into glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate plus ADP as a product. And one of the enzymes that catalyzes this reaction is glucokinase. Now I say one of the enzymes because glucokinase is an isozyme of a hexokinase. So all these hexokinases catalyze the same reaction. But glucokinase is found in the liver where it acts a little bit more like a glucose sensor. And glucokinase is regulated in part by the substrate concentration. And to see that, we have to look at the effect of substrate on the velocity of the reaction catalyzed by glucokinase. So now let's look at a plot of the velocity of the reaction carried out by glucokinase as a function of glucose. And we can see that at high glucose here, the change in the velocity of the reaction with the change in substrate is very negligible. In fact, I would say it's zero. So in this region of the curve, the substrate does not change the velocity of the reaction. But if you look down at lower glucose concentrations here, you see that there is a change in velocity of reaction, change in V0 with the change in substrate. In fact, it looks like it, it tends to be one. So for every increase in glucose, you get an increase in velocity of the reaction. In fact, this is what the michaelis menten equation tells us. And if you remember, the substrate concentration that gives you half maximal of the Vmax is the Km. So it's around the Km that it looks like glucokinase is sensitive to the, to the substrate concentration. So we're going to look at the properties of glucokinase relative to substrate concentration to see how this happens. Remember, glucokinase is in the liver. And you can see from the plot that it has a Km for glucose of 10 millimolar. So we want to see how sensitive glucokinase is to the concentration of glucose. And to do that, it helps if we look at the concentration of glucose over a large range of glucose concentrations. So we've taken the log of glucose, so we're going from 0.01 millimolar to 100 millimolar glucose. And it's the same graph, except now it has a different shape because it's on a log plot. And you can see that right around the Km here, which is 10 millimolar, it looks like this is where the enzyme is most sensitive to substrate concentration. The glucose concentration is really around one millimolar, and so it's right where the glucokinase starts to be sensitive to glucose. So if you could look at the velocity of the reaction at one millimolar glucose and three millimolar glucose, 
And using this michaelis metten equation, you could calculate that at one millimolar glucose, the velocity of the reaction is 0 0.09 of Vmax, but at three millimolar, it's 0 0.23 of Vmax. So that change gives you a threefold change in velocity for a threefold change in glucose. So you see the glucokinase is sensitive to the glucose concentration because the Kn is around the concentration of glucose that's in the cell. Now you have a different result if we look at another isozyme called hexokinase. Hexokinase is shown on this linear plot in red. So hexokinase is an isozyme that catalyzes the same reaction, but it is found in muscle. And the Km for hexokinase for glucose is 0 0.1 millimolar. So it's hard to see the sensitivity of hexokinase to glucose on this graph. So we're going to now look at it on the log plot. And you can see that it's not sensitive to glucose in the range where you find glucose in the cell. So if you did the same calculation with hexokinase going from 1 millimolar to 3 millimolar glucose, now you would see that the velocity of the reaction goes from 0 0.9 of Vmax to 0 0.96 of Vmax. So there's basically no change in the velocity of the reaction for hexokinase at the concentration of glucose that's in the cell. So what this tells you is that when the substrate concentration is around the Km of the enzyme for the substrate, then that is when the velocity of the reaction is sensitive to substrate concentration. So that's why glucokinase can be regulated by glucose concentration, but hexokinase cannot. Now what about hexokinase? How can that be regulated? Let's again look at a plot of hexokinase, the velocity of the reaction versus glucose and we see that it is insensitive to the concentration of glucose found in the cell, but if you added an inhibitor, that would slow down the reaction here, so you would get a decrease in the velocity of a reaction. This is how hexokinase is regulated. So we have glucose plus ATP going to glucose 6-phosphate plus ADP, and the enzyme that catalyzes it in the muscle cell is hexokinase. I'm going to draw this as a square, and I'm going to get it a site for glucose and ATP, different shapes. This is hexokinase. So these are the catalytic sites here. So glucose 6-phosphate is actually an inhibitor of the enzyme hexokinase and it can inhibit by occupying the catalytic site, but it can also inhibit by binding to a site different from the catalytic site, an allosteric site. So you see that for a given, given substrate concentration, an inhibitor decreases the velocity of a reaction. So let's summarize what we've learned about enzyme regulation. One, we know that we can have a substrate regulate the velocity of an enzyme, enzyme reaction, reaction, and that only occurs when the substrate concentration is around the same value as the Km. And then we also learn that an inhibitor regulates the velocity of, of the enzyme reaction, so that for a given substrate concentration, the inhibitor will decrease the velocity by a certain amount. So that's the way that substrates and inhibitors regulate enzyme reactions.